Yeah, I'm uh, Harry Porton. Um, I um, uh, got into contact uh, with uh, Q through uh, my times as a student working on the KD open source project. Later, I was also employed by Trolltech, the original makers of Qt, and uh, there, uh, together with a colleague, uh, I uh, founded our own company in um, 2003, and uh, FrogLogic is specializing on uh, QA tools. We have a GUI testing tool, Squish, and a code coverage tool, Coco. And uh, today I want to talk about the experience or best practices that we have discovered when uh, talking to above uh, 3,000 customers that we have. And uh, mainly I want to point out the, uh, the differences to uh, other types of testing, but I will not bore you with this uh, diagram or go into theory. Uh, you will probably recognize this uh, classic old style, sometimes hated. Uh, V-model, uh, the only thing I want to point out is really there are different uh, types of testing and uh, we as mostly developers, I assume, are often um, dealing with the, the testing at the lower unit level here, but um, the UI testing is something completely different and that's what I want to talk about. So anything here at the higher integration uh, testing level or acceptance testing uh, should not be treated the same as unit testing and that's the difference I want to emphasize. Um, I want to present a concept uh, that became familiar under the name BDD, which stands for Behavior Driven Development. It's an approach where uh, the behavior or the expected behavior of the application is defined in an almost human readable way uh, in terms of user stories. Um, a tool named Cucumber made a syntax popular that's called Gherkin. And uh, Gherkin files are used to describe how an application should behave as a black box. And that's really different than what you do as a developer, where uh, you'll immediately think in terms of classes, functions, uh, storage formats, wire protocols, and uh, we really advise you to not think this way, uh, but rather look at the application from the outside. And uh, based on those documents, the developers uh, know uh, what uh, the main behavior should be. The testers can either manually test their application or do it in an automated fashion. And uh, the whole thing can also be used as an input for uh, writing documentation later, because that's your contract. And um, I want to contrast that with a unit test, and I've grabbed that one from the Qt uh, repository. It's a test for the uh, swap function of the Qvarian class. And um, if you split that into pieces, you will recognize a pattern that is uh, common to all tests, of course. First, you set up the object that you want to test. Um, then in the main phase, you perform some actions on the object. And in the end, you verify that the state that you expected has really been assumed. Of course, this can go around in cycles, but this is at least the most basic mode. And this is also how you can look at uh, UI testing, but not necessarily at this level of detail. So don't think in terms of types and classes and so on. Uh, picture yourself describing to uh, your colleague how would an application behave if certain things are done. And uh, this is what I'm going to uh, show live. I will switch to a virtual image here for Linux, and I'm going to use our testing tool Squish for this. Um, this is the uh, Squish IDE, and uh, I will create a new um, test suite here, which is a collection of test cases. And uh, from the various UI toolkits that are supported, so there's also native Windows, Web, Java, and so on, of course, we'll use Qt. Uh, there are five different scripting languages that you can use, JavaScript, Perl, Python, Ruby, or Tickle. Choose whatever you prefer, what you like most. Uh, we support them equally well. And the final question I'm asked is, uh, what uh, is your main application that you want to test? You can have several ones, but in this case, we'll have a, a single one. Uh, this is a cat application that I downloaded from the net. Uh, we can take a look at it first. And uh, you see here, there's a welcome dialog. Um, let's open some sample file. Uh, this is the application's logo. And I want to uh, demonstrate the development of or two or three uh, tests on this application. Um, let's say we do something very simple like checking that the, the version number is displayed correctly or maybe I should repeat uh, or show the steps that I'm going to do. So I'm starting the application, I'm creating a new document and uh, when opening the uh, about dialog I want this version 2015 uh, to be shown. That's the test I want to automate as the first uh, easy one. And I've, uh, I will create a new uh, test case, which will be about the versions. And uh, here we see a template um, 
but I will start from scratch for better understanding. I will first define what is the name of my feature that I'm going to test. That's the version display. Um, I can list one or several scenarios that I want to walk through. Um, uh, let's say that's the version in uh, uh, the About dialog. And now I'm starting with the steps. And remember what I showed about the Qvariant test. There was the setup phase, there was the action phase, and there was the phase of the verifications. And in this Gherkin language, uh, there are some keywords that uh, uh, match those. So given stands for the precondition. So given the cat application is running, um, when I create a new uh, file, so that's the button that I pressed in the welcome screen, and I uh, open the about dialog, then now the expectation is there, then I expect the version 2015.3 or something to be shown. And you see this is really abstract. This will work no matter whether you implement your application uh, with QWidgets, QML, or whatever, whether they are drop-down menus, that's all not part of this test. So this can survive really long unless very conceptual changes in your application are done. This could be followed manually. Of course, we are talking about automation here. The tool is not able to parse that, so that would be a real miracle. Um, it's actually asking me, how should I automate this one? And the exclamation marks uh, tell me, I don't know what to do about this step. And the easiest way to fill that step with life is to start a recording of those uh, four missing steps. So I'm pressing the record button. The application is showing, and this uh, control bar here tells me um, this is about the first step given the application is running, which is the, the case. I can confirm that one. Now, when I create a new file, I just have to press this new button here. And um, now the next step, uh, actually let me confirm that first, is about uh, opening the About dialog. I'm also done with this one. Now expect the version number to be shown. That's the first time I don't perform an action, but I will perform a verification. And there are several types. We can check for individual properties, and those are the same that a Qt developer would use for development. I can take screenshots, can grab whole tables, I can do visual layout testing where everything is considered. The new versions will also allow to search for sub-images or do optical character recognition. But in this phase, it's a cute application. I can very well inspect this control, so I will look for a single property only. And uh, here you see the, the tree of the uh, objects. In this case, it's a QWidget-based application. I can dive through, uh, uh, go through this tree, but it's probably going to big, so I'm using this picking utility here, and with a mouse, I can select the object of interest that I want to check. So I uh, selected the uh, text box there, it is a cute text browser, and uh, uh, you see all those properties showing up. Um, let's look for a suitable one. There's one plain text which removes all the HTML formatting in that, and I will save this as a verification. And uh, I'm done. Of course, I didn't just check for the version number. I checked for the whole string for simplicity for now. OK, so I'm done. Those. Uh, Warning signs are gone, and uh, I can now rerun that test. The tool, of course, ran as quickly as possible. If you want to slow that down, that's also possible. But UI tests can take a very long time, so um, try to make them as fast as possible, but not too fast. And um, maybe I should also show the magic behind that. There are script commands recorded for each of those steps, and you see functions like wait for objects. And those are synchronization statements that wait for an object to, to be created, to appear on the screen, to be really visible, not to be disabled. And only if that happens, then the UI tool will perform an oper oper operation on that object. OK, so that was test case number one. Maybe a bit too much work for such a simple sequence, but uh, this will start to pay off as soon as we do other checks. Let's say I want to um, do some drawings. I'll draw some colored cubes. Um, so I will define the feature, colored cubes. And the first scenario will be the uh, creation scenario, uh, create a yellow cube. 
I can now start reusing the existing command. So I want the application to be running. I want to create a new uh, project file. And uh, now the first new step will be, and I create a yellow cube. And my expectation is uh, then I expect a yellow cube to uh, be rendered a bit boring, maybe. But um, the challenge here is now we have new steps. The first steps are being reused, so there's no warning sign. So when I do a recording now, uh, everything is going to be replayed until the first non-implemented step, and uh, only the new ones need to be recorded. So I'll press the record button again. Now the editor is there, and I can um, execute those steps. So I've previously looked up in the manual. Setting the color works this way. Um, there is a way to uh, create a centered cube. I will render that uh, cube on the screen, and that means I'm done with the next step. I'll be confirming that. And now the expectation is that yellow sh cube should show up. If this would be a pure Qt application using Qt3D, I could now select that element and verify there is something with a certain size and a yellow color. But this is a plain old OpenGL drawing, so there's actually no way to inspect that in a, a good manner, a stable manner. Um, so the option I have here is to uh, verify this part of the window with a screenshot at least. So I will again do the same procedure. I will select the object of interest, so the whole uh, display of the graphics. Um, and I will uh, grab that uh, data from the application. This is done over a network if necessary, so if you are testing on an embedded device, you would now see the expected screenshots inside of the, uh, the IDE. And I will insert that one as a verification. And I'm done with my last step. Okay, so the warning signs are gone. I will replay that test, but as I first tried this out before, I somewhat already expect this test not to fully work. See the, the yellow rectangle appears, but still some error is reported, so I chose a realistic example here. UI testing is definitely not easy, especially full of synchronization issues. The UI sometimes takes some time to respond. Uh, in this case, the cube needed to be uh, generated and rendered, and this took uh, just maybe over a second, uh, but still the tool was taking the screenshot too early. And we'll see that in a detailed manner if we look at the reason for the failure. And uh, uh, this is here, I can also do it in a flickering mode, so we see the, the rectangle is differently missing, and if I just do a plain subtraction, I also notice that the, the axes are somewhat not drawn in a predictable way, so there is some some randomness behind that or whatever the drawing of the cube changes uh, some pixels. I can tune this a little bit, so I instead of insisting on 100% pixel perfection, I can maybe tune it to 97, that will maybe take care of the axis being a little bit different, uh, but of course, the, why is the cube missing? Um, uh, yeah, we took the screenshot uh, too early, as I said, and to just confirm this theory, I will go to the line of the test script that um, took this image and a uh, quick way uh, to verify that the problem lay here is to maybe wait, wait a second. If this works, this would be incentive for me to not necessarily leave this as if the machine becomes slower or some, something changes, those hard-coded timing values are actually a bad thing. But it's good to try out the theory and um, um, I can also mention how I would uh, fix this in a real way. Oh, sorry, I think I did something completely wrong. Sorry? Sorry, what is the problem here? Oh, okay. Um, so let's replay. So this was the waiting a second, so that worked. Okay, what would the proper fix be? Inside of the application, there is a, a logging window which uh, shows for all operations that it does uh, how much time it took uh, to render a scene here. And this is something I would wait for. So I would follow that log and check whether the total rendering time text has appeared, and then I would take the screenshot. So that's the proper way to it I would recommend. 
Okay, but uh, now uh, want to, I want to show more features of this BDD approach, and that is uh, working with parameterized, parameterized tests. So let's say I want to uh, uh, create a, a view, uh, blue cube. Um, I could copy the whole scenario. Um, Let's say I only changed the creation here. This step is unknown. Should I re-record re that step? No, that would really become cumbersome. So there are tests where you want to try out a lot of variations within your application. It may be numbers or other settings that you want to change. And I will show you how to do the parameterization here. I will look at the implementation of the code that created the yellow cube. And I will um, use a placeholder here which will later be put into an extra variable to the callback function that's called. And I will pass on the, uh, the parsed uh, color here in this uh, script. And uh, the warning is gone. So now I have uh, created a reusable step. Again, let's say I have uh, 200 colors to test. This would also become too cumbersome. And uh, for that case, uh, there's uh, another standard feature uh, called scenario outline. Create uh, colored cubes. And I will re start replacing even that value with a, um, a placeholder. So I can then start a new section called examples. And this can be a table with um, several columns. and um, um, I just can type it in this, like, in a human readable way. And, of course, as programmers, we could do the same probably in C++, but this is not the language that you're going to talk among testers with your management. If you have such a representation and it's all nicely colored in red and green, this is nice to present, but that's just one aspect. The other is that you have really created a separation between the low-level details of interacting with Qt controls and uh, this high-level description. And this can definitely survive much longer than um, anything else. Um, uh, let's uh, maybe uh, turn uh, back to uh, some uh, general approaches uh, that I wanted to recommend. And that is first, ensure that your tests are really running regularly. We have seen customers who only ran their, started running their test a few days or within the release process. Suddenly they discover the application has changed a lot. Uh, it may have uh, uh, gotten some bugs. The test setup can also be buggy. Who knows, there are a lot of issues. Uh, potential issues, and only if you do this at least once a day, if you can afford it time-wise, uh, better as a CI system like Jenkins or Bamboo or your homegrown one, run the test to get the feedback quickly. So not just about the quality of your software, but also about the stability of your tests. As these are UI tests, there's the speed issue to uh, consider, though. Um, we, I know from customers who have test suites running for several days, uh, they then started to uh, do parallelization. Um, so run them on multiple machines. I saw that National Instruments also has a tool to even pack uh, the tests on uh, multiple machines in a very compressed way. That's also fine if you have your um, framework for doing that. And uh, later looking at the results, uh, yeah, try to detect trends. That's a new product that we have in the works. Uh, which will give you the answers for uh, issues appearing on a certain platform in, in case you are uh, covering more than one. And uh, last I'm, item I wanted to show is, uh, when are you actually done? Uh, you may have heard the term uh, code coverage in general or test coverage. Uh, this is a very experimental thing still uh, where we measure whether all the controls have actually been used. So has there been a click on each element? Has there been some text input into each Q-line edit, as an example? That's from the UI perspective. But the more classic one that you surely all have heard is uh, uh, looking at the, at the code uh, coverage itself. And um, I have um, uh, tried this out before uh, using our second... Uh, tool Coco, and I have uh, run uh, three uh, UI tests against the code base, and I can now browse through the source code to see which of uh, the lines are being covered by those tests. Going for 100% is something that you would only do if you're working in a safety-critical industry. Uh, something between uh, 60 and 80% percent is already good. Uh, de also depends on the level, so the basic ones is line coverage. There are higher level ones uh, like MCDC here. 
And um, um, last item here, if you have many UI tests and you don't know, should I rerun all of those? Um, I will uh, explain what you can do once you have uh, measured all of this. Uh, so let's say a developer uh, goes in here, changes a line of code, is done with its editing, and um, look at this patch. Um, you can write this into a file, and uh, then uh, use one of those tools to analyze this patch even before rerunning your tests. And it will generate a very ugly looking report, so this would be up to the user to style this in their corporate design. But uh, what you see here is that the diff is analyzed and it tells you which test should be re rerun to uh, cover the, uh, the changed lines. And this can even be done, as I said before, even building your uh, source code uh, again. Okay, that was uh, meant as a time-saving thing, and speaking of time, I got the sign that I uh, should end uh, with my talk. And uh, yeah, we have a little bit uh, time left, though, for questions, so I would like to use, uh, reserve that time. Thanks, everyone, so far, though. Wait a second. Testing of animations is uh, regularly asked, especially since new systems and automotive, etc., do have animations. I always admit it's quite uh, tough to do. If you have a way to query the animation properties from the UI state, you can use the tool to even go inside and query the properties for that. If you want to capture the animation showing up on the screen, you can, of course, frequently take snapshots and find the series. There's also fuzzy comparison. The sizes can also be adjusted automatically. But uh, like a millisecond uh, precision for animation testing, I would say, is very tough. And further questions? There's one of the two in the back. No. Uh, how does Squish works with uh, automation? For an example, Travis CI? Car? How does uh, Squish work with uh, automation, uh, for an example, Travis CI? I don't understand that word, unfortunately. Uh, continuous integration uh, with the oh. UI testing. How oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, like uh, Jenkins, etc. there are plugins. So I've used the UI here, but this was just for the creation and debugging of the uh, tests. In real life, you would do everything from the command line. The tests are stored in plain text file on the hard disk. Okay. There's XML output or HTML output, so you can drive everything without the UI being involved and the human being involved. Is there a plugin for Travis as well? Uh, at least there's a documentation how to do it, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So there's no big magic. We don't have to provide those bindings. It's really command line tools that you invoke with the name of the test and it will output the results. Okay, thank you. There were further questions in the back. Um, yeah, do you have some support for refactoring? So if uh, developers do a lot of refactoring, function renaming and so on, is there uh, some tools to make this easier to adjust the test cases? Yeah, also? I admit we started with our own Qt based uh, IDE in 2003. Uh, back then Qt Creator didn't exist, uh, so refactoring was very tough. Then we switched to using Eclipse, which looks extremely ugly and is very ugly to program. But uh, we, nowadays we would use Crude Creator, but Eclipse also has a lot of refactoring opportunities. So the object name scheme that I didn't go into, but is now very easy to refactor. So if you change the name of an object, you can update that name everywhere in your scripts in an automatic fashion. But it's important to put things into functions, make them reusable, etc. That's a very important concept that you should take over from software development to testing. No. <clears throat> um, so this, uh, this uh, window that you're showing there uh, lists the potential tests that might be affected by the patch. Yeah. and. Uh, <clears throat> Some might get the greedy idea of not re running every single test for yes. every patch, but yeah, what it's do you just think of a it? heuristic. Uh, uh, to cut you short, there, uh, it's just a guess uh, as a recommendation before you ship your product, or if you have more time, you should run all of your tests. That's absolutely true. Mm. 
But, but generally, the, the, um, the guessing is based on um, line coverage, so whether the line is affected by... Uh roughly. Uh, there are higher levels than line coverage, but uh, roughly speaking, it's the line, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, my question is, so given the existing QT uh, unit testing framework, is, is, is this complementary or is this a complete replacement for that? Yeah, no, it's not a complete replacement. So as I showed the initial... Uh, example, if I would write a unit test, and I also know the Qt company does uh, component tests with a Qt test slip, so if it's just about calling a function or sending a mouse event somewhere, I think that's something that I will also do in Qt test slip. Uh, so this is for a higher level of testing. Okay. Otherwise, we have a booth outside. Uh, if you want to see more advanced demos, get a trial version or have some questions, uh, feel free to contact us there. Okay, thanks a lot. Many thanks.